Okay, now call to order the September 1st, 2022 meeting of the City of Nashville Planning Board. Okay, uh, we have a roll call, please. please. I can hear. Yeah. Yeah. Lindy, thank you. Uh, Mayor Dantes, Mike Peterson. Here. Scott LeClaire. Adam Barley. Here. Maggie Harper. Alderman Clee. Dan Hudson. Bob Bollinger. Here. Larry Hirsch. Here. Mark Mead. Here. And Alderman Tebow. Here. All right, we have a quorum. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, next up on the agenda, we have approval of the minutes from the August 4th, 2022 meeting. Um, has anyone who's here at that meeting had an opportunity to review the minutes and we'll move to accept the minutes accept. of the uh, August 5th meeting? Uh, motion by Mr. Hirsch to accept the minutes uh, as written. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Peterson. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Thank you. So, two abstentions. All right. Uh, communications. Sure. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair and fellow members of the Planning Board. The following items of communication arrived after your packet was mailed. A220299-300-301-302, that's 145 Temple Street. That's a letter from Matthew Sullivan uh, and Jerry Prunier to continue the uh, project to a later date. And the second item uh, is a, an amended staff report. Dated 829-2022, that's case 822-0169, uh, two, two to six and a half Bridge Street and two to four Robinson Court. We have a engineering letter dated August 29th, 2022. Uh, Joe Mandolas, senior traffic engineer. And we have a additional waiver request, number three, for parking aisles uh, from the applicant, uh, Andrew Swanson. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Mr. Chair, if I may sure. interrupt for just a moment. I'm not getting any audio on the Zoom. I don't know if we want to let um, folks know. Um, Larry, I'm sorry to imposition you. Do you mind letting them know there doesn't appear to be audio on the Zoom? Okay. It's on. No. Okay, okay. Can you hear me now? Lindig, I'm sorry, could you try one more time? Sir, sure, sure. can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bellinger. Okay, uh, next up, report of uh, committee liaison. Are there any committee reports? No? Okay. Uh, in that case, before we get into the main agenda, I will uh, go ahead and read the procedure of the meeting, uh, or summarize the procedure of the meeting for, for the benefit of um, those here in the audience and on Zoom. Um, so the procedure of the meeting uh, and hearings will be as follows. After the legal notice of each application is read, uh, the board will determine if the application is complete and ready for the board to take jurisdiction. The public hearing will begin at that time um, when the applicant or representative will be given an opportunity to present an overview and description of their project. Um, the board will then have an opportunity to ask relevant follow-up questions of the applicant or staff. The chair will then ask for testimony from the audience, um, both those speaking in favor and those speaking in opposition. Um, there will then be an opportunity for the board to ask follow-up questions of the applicant and an opportunity for the applicant to um, provide rebuttal to uh, any public testimony. Um, after this process has been completed, the public hearing will end and the board will resume the public meeting, at which time the board will deliberate and vote on the application before us. We ask that both sides keep their remarks to the subject at hand and do not repeat what has already been said. Uh, thank you for interest and courteous attention. I ask that everyone please turn off their phones at this time. Uh, we're definitely getting a little feedback. <laughs> There's anything we can do about that. Uh, We'll now go ahead and proceed with the regular agenda. So old business conditional special use permits, we have none. Uh, old business subdivision plans, case number A21-0299. 
145 Temple Street, LLC, owner, Green Ridge, LLC, applicant, proposed three lot subdivision. This property is located at 145, 149 Temple Street, sheet 38, lot 93, uh, zone gen general industrial and transit oriented development, and it's located in Ward 7. Um, and we will take that case together with old business site plans, a21-0300, A21-0301, and A21-0302, all with the same identifying information. So uh, just to recap, we had uh, last uh, addressed this case at our, at our prior meeting. Um, we had at that time requested the city utilize its um, uh, sort of uh, on retainer engineer to conduct an environmental assessment for the project and we had initially tabled or not tabled but requested the assent of the applicant uh, to uh, table the case to this meeting um, but as it stands the report has not yet been completed additionally my understanding is that the applicant has also um, sought their own independent report and that is also not yet complete. So um, with the request from the applicant that we received in advance of the meeting tonight requesting that we postpone the case, uh, what we'd be looking to do here is just further table all four of these cases to the October 6, 2022 meeting. So that's the, the motion I would be looking for. Someone's willing to make it. So moved, Mr. Chair. Um, so a motion by uh, Mr. Meehan to table Old Business Subdivision Plan, Case A21-0299, and Old Business Site Plans, Cases A21-0300, A21-0301, and A21-0302, to the October 6, 2022 meeting. Is there a second to that motion? Second, Mr. Chair. Seconded by Mr. Bollinger. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Meehan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. It, it may be for staff. Does the, uh, the study that's going to occur, does it include the environmental impact of the truck, projected truck traffic that's entering and exiting the site? Or is it focused on the actual plant itself and its function? So, you know, my understanding based on the discussion we had at the last meeting and, and sort of the direction we gave, and I think the understanding we had from staff is that it, it probably, it's generally going to be more limited to the, the operations of the plant itself. Um, it's it's possible that the report might comment sort of on an ancillary basis on truck traffic but the, the primary focus of it was the the impact of the operation of the, the, of the plant the you know production of use of the asphalt itself is, is that does that sound fair that's correct that's what I'm going to do as well. okay. if i may i i appreciate that and i understand from was it june 2nd when we met and we had all the documentation of the plan itself, the extent to which they were doing to um, limit the impact. But um, part of our discussion that night was that the environmental impact includes, it was estimated I think 125 or 150 triaxle dump trucks that would be pulling in and exiting that space amid um, rapidly increasing housing. So, Maybe we pull that up when we, when we have our next meeting. We bring that up to the table, but. Yeah, I, I do think part of the discussion too was that, you know, we are getting a traffic report. So understanding that that's, you know, there's not usually an environmental component to that, but we are getting, you know, a, a, a report and assessment of the traffic in, impact independent of any environmental report we're requesting. You know, also I would say that it would be unusual, I mean, even in a sort of high traffic um, type of, you know, site plan that we would request an independent environmental assessment. I mean, usually we'd be focused on, you know, the, the traffic study and, and, and what it um, concludes in terms of the impact. Um, so I think we felt, if I can speak for the board, that with the environmental assessment we were requesting plus the traffic um, report <coughs> assessment that that would hopefully be comprehensive enough. But that's not to say that we can't discuss the issue okay. um, once we get to the point of, okay. you know, evaluating the merits of the application. So, thank you. 
Mr. Chair, if I may just add to that, just just from from my professional experience, it it, it would in fact be rare uh, for a traffic study to address environmental issues. Um, th that said, if Mr. Meehan has any concerns about questions with regard to truck circulation, um, specifically as to whether or not truck routes would be designated, um, i.e. trying to keep them off any connectors to avoid Main Street, such as uh, Alds or Taylor or things like that, I think those would be germane questions to ask, but the traffic analysis itself would typically not address CO2 emissions or NOx emissions or, or things of that. So. Um, I, um, thank you. I appreciate that very much, and, and I respect, you know, as engineers, your, your understanding of that. I would note that it is a very rare instance where you have 150 triaxle trucks driving through a high-density housing area, yeah, and I, that would warrant an ex some kind of additional inquiry, but I'm very happy to wait until we get to that point. Right, yeah, and I, and I do obviously want to be a little bit careful tonight since we're, we're just making a motion as the sure. tabling not to get too much into the, yeah, the substance yeah. but the point is well taken um, and I, I do think we will very much have the opportunity to to raise and discuss those issues Thank when you. we do hear the case okay. so we do have um, the motion by Mr. Meehan second by Mr. Bollinger um, is there any further discussion okay. all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed abstentions one abstention, me. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Okay. So next, uh, new business conditional special use permits, none. New business subdivision plans, none. New business site plans. Uh, case A22-0169, Crimson Properties Owner, application and acceptance on proposed 24-unit apartment development along with associated site improvements. This property is located at 2 to 6 Bridge Street and 1 to 4 Robinson Court. Sheet 38, lot 29, 30, and 31, zoned general industrial and transit oriented district. And this is located in Ward 3. Um, has anyone had an opportunity to uh, review the application and uh, would someone be willing to make a motion as to whether it's complete and ready for us to accept jurisdiction? Mr. Bollinger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to make a motion to accept jurisdiction over a new business site plan, case A22-0169, uh, Crimson Properties Owner. Thank you, Mr. Bollinger. Uh, is there a second? Second by Mr. Meehan. Is there any further discussion to that motion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. All right. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. For the record, my name is Tom Zajac. I'm a civil engineer with Hainer Swanson, 3 Congress Street here in Nashua. Here tonight representing Crimson Properties on their, their property located at the corner of Bridge Street and Robinson Court. Uh, also with me here tonight is Randy Chermel from Crimson Properties, as well as attorney Brad Westgate from Weiner & Bennett, the project attorney. We're here tonight seeking site plan approval to redevelop the property. Uh, into uh, 24 proposed residential units uh, in a project to be known as Jackson Square. So I just have a brief presentation uh, for you here tonight, uh, after which we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, so as shown on our plans and up on the screen before you, uh, the site, existing site is comprised of three lots, uh, map 38, lots 29, 30, and 31. Uh, street address being two to six and a half Bridge Street and two to four Robinson Court. Uh, the total site uh, for those three lots is about three quarters of an acre. Uh, the site's located in the GI General Industrial District uh, as well as the Transit Oriented Development TOD overlay. Site is adjacent to the Bridge Street, Canal Street, Amory Street intersection. Uh, direct abutters include Bridge Street, a convenience store, and multifamily residential uses to the south, Robinson Court, an auto repair shop, and multifamily residential uses to our east, as well as uh, Eversource and Liberty Utilities properties to our north and west. Uh, taking a step back, this property is located within the ever changing East Hollis Street Gateway neighborhood, which, as you know, extends from the downtown to the Merrimack River. I know the board is very familiar with this area. 
uh, having uh, approved a number of uh, projects over the last uh, few years. Uh, it, it's an area of the city that contains many old industrial properties, uh, many of which are being redeveloped uh, into residential housing to address the, the city and state's critical housing shortage. The existing site itself contains uh, a number of buildings, including an auto repair shop, all of which have now been demolished. Uh, the site's currently vac uh, vacant, being used as a, a contractor's yard and for parking. Uh, existing site has two curb cuts off of Bridge Street, as well as access off of Robinson Court. Robinson Court is fairly unique. It's a, a public way uh, that is about 11 feet wide in terms of the right of way and the paved way is, is about 10 feet, uh, which provides uh, access off of Bridge Street, not only for this property, but uh, abutting properties to our north. The site itself has flat topography and fairly well-drained soils, uh, deep depths to groundwater. Public sewer, water, gas, electric, and telecommunications utilities are either currently stubbed to the site or available in the adjacent streets. Um, it's worth noting uh, a couple unique survey matters that have come up during our office's uh, deed and plan research for this property. Uh, our surveyor identified two small areas that are shown on the plans labeled as parcel A and common parcel B that are adjacent to but not subject of the site plan application. Parcel A was excluded from the conveyances in the chain of title to the subject properties and this is not included as part of the land to be developed even though it has been used and occupied for many years. Uh, common Parcel B was established for common use back in the 1800s, uh, for which no, no buildings or fences are to be erected upon. Our research found that uh, there are no subsequent deeds for these parcels for over 100 years. Therefore, we are representing that they are of unknown ownership. Uh, in the anticipation that the board or staff may have questions about this, Attorney Westgate did prepare a letter and that was submitted to the city in advance and as part of our application that provides a little further explanation as to the status of these two areas. And certainly Attorney Westgate is here tonight. I'd be happy to answer any, any detailed questions or provide a, a more detailed explanation. Uh, I tried to give you the quick and dirty summary there. Um, in terms of the proposed project, as I mentioned, uh, we're looking to redevelop the site. Uh, into uh, 24 units of residential development to be known as Jackson Square. The proposed development includes two three-story 12-unit buildings up along Bridge Street with parking to the rear of the site. Access to the site will be provided via Robinson Court, which will be widened from Bridge Street back to the new site driveway to provide full two-way access. The existing curb cuts that I mentioned along Bridge Street will be eliminated and new curbing and sidewalk will be along, uh, installed along the site's Bridge Street frontage. This uh, approach to access management for our site uh, is something that we reviewed and agreed upon early on with uh, DPW and the city's traffic engineer. A total of 33 parking spaces are provided. Uh, it's worth noting that the project seeks to utilize uh, a combination of standard and compact spaces. Um, although fairly common across the industry and in other municipalities, there currently aren't any provisions in our land use code to allow for compact parking spaces. Uh, as proposed, the compact parking spaces would be eight feet wide by 18 feet deep. Comparison, as you know, a standard parking spaces is nine by 20. Compact parking spaces are a great way to maximize both the parking efficiency and also the green space provided, especially for urban redevelopment projects such as this. Um, and uh, that, that request to allow compact parking is one of the three uh, site plan waivers that I will address shortly. Additional site improvements include new curbing, sidewalk, signage, site lighting, landscaping, utility services, and stormwater management. Uh, looking a little bit more at the, the units and, and the building itself, uh, as I mentioned, the, there are two 12-unit buildings. Uh, Mr. Termell envisions uh, 12 one-bedroom units and 12 two-bedroom units. The average unit size uh, will be about 550 square feet, which will help Mr. Termell, uh, uh, his vision to, to make these units affordable. 
As part of the application, we provided a number of 3D renderings to give board and staff an understanding of the look and feel of the proposed design. Exterior of the building will be uh, finished similar to residential homes with a hint of uh, an industrial building as a nod to the old, uh, the industrial nature of that neighborhood. Uh, upper roofs will be asphalt shingles, siding will be a combination, uh, corrugated metal uh, from the ground level to the bottom windows, then stand standard vinyl siding and vinyl shakes as you move up the exterior elevation. The interior of the buildings will be finished similar to residential homes, uh, including 10-foot ceilings to provide a greater sense of volume and daylight. Uh, with regards to stormwater management, we've got a good story to tell here, which is typical for uh, many redevelopment projects. Uh, the existing site is cleared and developed and does not contain any formal stormwater treatment practices. After the project is constructed, the site will not only contain more open space, but also a formal on-site drainage and stormwater management uh, system that will significantly improve uh, both the qualitative treatment and attenuation of runoff compared to the existing site. A uh, traffic memo was submitted along with a TIR worksheet prepared by the traffic uh, consultant for the project. Analysis shows sufficient site distances available in both directions based on the size of the project is well below the thresholds that would require further study. Mr. Chair, as I mentioned, we are requesting three site plan waivers uh, here tonight outlined uh, in my letter last revised uh, September 1st, earlier today. Uh, I did bring I wasn't sure if they would make it into your packet, so I do have hard copies here tonight, um, but I understand they did. Well, thank you to staff. Uh, the first is for existing conditions. The second is for the parking space dimensions as it relates to the use of compact uh, spaces. And the third is for a landscaped island within the rear parking aisle since it exceeds 10 spaces. We have 12 compact spaces proposed in that location. Um, as outlined in the letter, we believe each of these requests is reasonable given the nature of this urban redevelopment project and meets the spirit and intent of the land use ordinance. Uh, I'd ask that the letter be incorporated into the record, uh, but would certainly be happy to speak to each uh, of those waiver requests uh, if desired by the board. Uh, so in summary, Mr. Chair, we believe the application as proposed is complete and conforms with the applicable site plan regulations. We believe the project is being developed in accordance with the TOD overlay district goals and with the overarching goals and objectives of the master plan. We believe the site is being redeveloped in a responsible manner and is a great opportunity to increase the city's housing stock when desperately needed. We have had a chance to re uh, review the amended staff report and it's, a, it's acceptable uh, to the applicant. Uh, we did receive engineering comments uh, this week uh, I know City Engineer Hudson is not here tonight, but we did have an opportunity to discuss his comments with him and staff, and uh, there are a couple comments that may require some further coordination, but we're certainly confident that we can work with them moving forward to address it to their satisfaction. So with that, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just had uh, well, I have one question about the plan and then um, couple clarifying questions about parcel A and parcel B, so maybe Attorney Vasquez can answer those. Um, understanding that this this project is under the threshold for the new inclusionary zoning, I'm just wondering, you know, given given that activity and some of the considerations of the master plan, it, it, is there any, can you provide any input in terms of, you know, what the expectations or intent is in, in terms of the, you know, the, the housing in terms of, you know, market versus um, you know, consideration being given to, um, you know, having some of it be more affordable, or is, is there any thought to that in, in terms of the, the plan? Or So I'd probably let either uh, Attorney Westgate or Mr. Chamel handle, handle that question. I would note I, I do believe this project would uh, fall under uh, the requirement for the new uh, section of the uh, affordable housing code, given that I believe we're between 10 and 49 units for a rental. Uh, property so okay. we would be subject to that and would comply with that with that regulation okay thank you that's correct okay. mr. Mead? yeah I just have a couple you know, if you don't mind uh, 
is there additional fencing or, or other kinds of barriers needed with the Eversource property abutting the residential property? I didn't know that in your in the plan. I, would, I didn't know if that was something that had to be dealt with. Or yeah, let me just triple check before I answer that question. <laughs> I think we, uh, we are representing that along the uh, east, uh, westerly property line, I apologize, uh, abutting the uh, Eversource property. We are uh, representing that we're being saw a new stockade fence there. So certainly something we'll need to coordinate with Eversource going forward in terms of where their fence ends and where our, our begins. But yeah, certainly we recognize the need for some screening and some buffering along that, along that edge. And if I may, just a couple more. Um, I wasn't sure on the plan, it looks like you're using the Robinson Court, which I think is dirt, most of it. I see this lot, I love this project. I see this every day on my way home from work. <laughs> I, I think it, it really fits the, uh, the master plan goals really well. Um, but I was curious if the Robinson Court is kind of parallel to your driveway or are you using Robinson Court? Yeah, it's a, it's a really unique situation. You've got Robinson Court, which is an 11 foot wide roughly right-of-way with about a 10-foot wide driveway essentially in the middle of it. So what we're doing is we're essentially utilizing the existing public right-of-way and we're building on that. We've got a proposed public access and utility easement okay. on the westerly side on our side and coupled with the common parcel B as I described. Mm -hmm. Essentially those three will function as and allow us to construct a quote unquote typical 24 foot wide two way access up okay. along there. And okay. so uh, if you note in the engineering comments that th there's gonna need to be formal agreements that are worked out. It's our understanding that the city does plow and maintain Robinson Court. I think the intent would be the city would continue to do so. But of course, uh, you know, the applicant would need to grant them the right to do that okay. and along that unique stretch. But when you drive in there, when it's all done, it's gonna look and feel like a a typical road roadway section there. Terrific. Um, and then just one more, if, I, if you don't mind, I, w I was um, curious about the parcel A and B. It, it just makes me a little apprehensive. Thinks if I was the developer, how is that dealt with by us, or is that just part of the? Yeah, and actually, board? I mean, I you know I don't know if this is maybe for Attorney Westgate to, to address, but I guess if I understood Tom your testimony correctly, the common parcel B there's. That's, there's not a question of ownership there. That's just a question of a restriction that's applicable to that portion, or whereas yeah. parcel A is there is a true sort of unique gap in the ownership chain. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Attorney <laughs> Westgate come up. I hate to give you my opinion as a engineer on, on that. But, I guess um, Mr. Barley, just to maybe add to the point that was brought up, does this effectively clear title for, for A, or is that just going to be in, like a question mark in perpetuity? Um, it's, it's more of a curiosity question. I don't think it affects my view of the project, but uh, it would be interesting to, to know. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Brad Westgate. I'm a lawyer with Weiner and Bennett, 111 Concord Street, Nashville, representing Crimson Properties, LLC. Um, as Tom had indicated, I wrote a letter um, really summarizing Hainer Swanson's deed research relative to parcels A and, B, and, and common parcel B. In both cases, the conclusion is owner unknown. So in terms of ownership, Crimson Properties does not own either A or common parcel B. Um, the interesting sort of tidbits about it are there were these deeds in the mid-1800s that um, initially relative to parcel A, there was a deed that included it with part of the bigger pieces that you're looking at, but then the next deed out excluded it. And these deeds were very precisely drawn in terms of uh, legal descriptions, courses, and distances. And there's just no way that we could come to the conclusion that Crimson, up the chain of title, wound up owning parcel A. They, they just don't by the terms of, those, of that deed. So that's excluded totally from this project. It's an oddball scenario, but this little strip is not part of the project. Parcel, common parcel B also had a similar um, dynamic where there were deeds in the mid 1800s and then no more deeds. But in one of the deeds in the 1800s, there was this language relative to common use. And the 
land, the language in that deed in 1856 was that the, uh, that land, parcel, common parcel B, was forever to remain as a common and unoccupied, and no building or fence is to be put thereon, but to be open for the convenience of the Underwood estate. So Hainer Swanson's research then tried to identify the parcels that would be benefited by that common usage, determined three of them adjacent parcels as, as well as part of the property that's part of the sub site plan. So sort of making an analysis of this, it came to the conclusion, well, what's common usage? You know, probability for a tight site like this, common usage is really primarily access and utilities. It's not going to be a small sort of gathering place or um, garden or that sort of thing. Um, so we made the judgment that uh, if this land, common parcel B, was made into an access area, but still open to those parcels benefited, we would be staying within the, uh, uh, the spirit of, of the common usage concept. So R Crimson doesn't own them. Uh, Crimson has common usage rights on parcel B and has essentially no rights to parcel A unless someday in the future uh, this proven by petition to quiet title and on adverse possession kind of case, that sort of thing. But uh, uh, that's not in the cards at the moment. But just, just to clarify that, so you said parcel A is not, not technically part of the pot project. So in the extremely unlikely event that someone were to challenge title, the, the project's not relying on that, that parcel. Correct. It's not relying. If Tom can correct me, but for example, in density analysis and all that open yeah. space, it, it doesn't count in the acreage. Right. Correct. Um, so. It's, might be. Mr. Uh, th th thank you. Um, I, I think that clears up the question that I had, but maybe just a quick follow-up. Um, will this property need to grant an easement to, to lot 6-8? Would they have right of access via the expanded Robinson Court access or? Um, I, I need know. to know which one is 6-8. Oh, the there's a little tiny apartment complex in the uh, northeast corner. Um, just It's outside of your property, but um, it, it looks like they have existing access via Robinson Court now, and I didn't know if they needed to be granted um, any sort of easement to utilize the... It's uh, Actually, you know, uh, it's labeled Owner Prospering Properties. Um, 63. So it's in the northeast corner, I guess. Right, Robinson. Yep. The existing yeah. four units. Okay, there are, let me just double check my letter, but I want to say that that is one of the lots that Hayner Swanson identified as having rights to the common parcel B. Um, bear with me just a moment. Okay, no, and the only reason I asked yes, is because map 38, lot, map 38, lot 32 is a benefited parcel for common parcel B. So it has that right. The, we didn't contemplate a specific further easement um, on this plan set. That, that would be the part I was questioning. That's that southerly, I guess, ex, I don't want to call it an extension, a southerly widening, if you will, um, for egress. I, I just didn't know if the plan needed to account for uh, any sort of access or egress requirement for that existing property, which, and again, understood that parcel B is common. Um, but if any any amenity had to be made regarding their ability to utilize that expanded, I'm going to call it expanded Robinson Court for lack of a better term. Right. So th that is correct in this sense. If, if I was to drive out of Map 38, Lot 32, and came down the right side, I'd come down Parcel Common Parcel B, and then the new access easement. Unless an easement's granted, I would do it without the benefit of that. You're absolutely right. We, and that's not part of what's been contemplated, but I do believe one of the proposed conditions of approval uh, that we have to work out with staff and then Corporation Council is an approval of all necessary easements for the project. It's conceivable that maybe staff would think that something like that should be generated. Okay, and, and um, that, that would be satisfactory to, to me anyway. I was just trying to think it out, uh, again, understanding the, the, the common usage of B, but I imagine they wouldn't want to, you know, relegate themselves to driving on the wrong side of the road, if you will, right. to, to, to right. egress their, their property. So that, that was it. I didn't mean to get too uh, deep into the yeah. weeds there, but yeah. uh, something to consider um, as you're working through uh, right. comments with staff. So, um, 
Tom has noted on the plan that it is proposed public access and utility. So probably the way we draft that easement is probably going to be broad enough to contemplate any um, parcel budding Robinson Court also has the right of usage over that, even perhaps without even identifying Lot 32 specifically. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Yes. I think that makes total sense, as you point out. Yeah. Understood. Thank you very much. Yeah. Other questions for the applicant? Okay. Looks like none at this time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, at this time, I would ask first um, in the audience if there's anyone who uh, wishes to speak in opposition or concern or with questions about the plan. Okay, seeing none, uh, I would now go to those of uh, those of you who are on Zoom and similarly ask if there's anyone who uh, has an interest in speaking in opposition or concern or, or has question about the plan. Seeing anyone, Linda? Okay. All right. Um, any other questions for the for the board while we're still in here? Uh, if not, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close the public hearing and uh, go into the public meeting and, as always, we reserve the right to, to reopen the, the hearing if, if need be. Um, so this seems like a, a fairly, <laughs> except for the parcel A and parcel B, <laughs> but a pretty straightforward proposal. Um, uh, Mr. Mean, I, I agree with you. I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good development. It's a, seems like a great redevelopment of this site. Um, again, very, very much consistent with the master plan. And I had mistakenly was, had the, the numbers wrong on the inclusionary zoning. So it's, it's excellent that it, you know, will comply with that as well. So, uh, in my view, uh, a very, a, a good project and good use of this, this lot. So, um, with that, I'd open it up to comments from others on the board. Alderman Tebow. Hey, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, so, I, I'm just curious about that A and B thing. So, if there's no title and there's nobody that owns it, th it doesn't revert to the state or anything, or the city, rather. It, it just kind of sits there, unknown ownership? Yeah, I mean, I think, and I'll just caveat this with, a, I'm not a real estate attorney, but I, I think, as uh, Attorney Westgate was saying, I mean, you could, you know, uh, you know, Proceed. You know, you could petition to quiet title. So basically, you know, if Crimson Properties wanted to say we we want to confirm definitively that we own this, there's a process that you go through. But yeah, absent that, it's just I, I don't know. I guess where where the chain of title ends yeah. with respect to that parcel. But yeah, it's it's just it's, again, it's just unknown. Yeah, it doesn't. It's it's not like uh, it's not like unclaimed property that okay. shoots to the state. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Well, Mr. Hirsch? Looks like a very good project. I think it's consistent <coughs> with our, uh, our master plan, our goals for the area. Um, and then there, there were, um, as Mr. Zajac indicated, uh, three waiver requests. Again, these all seemed reasonable to me, given the, the nature of the project. Um, and just to confirm with staff, this, all the, the dates we have in here for, there's a um, the letter from Joe Mandola, I believe that, that was updated, and then um, from Marco Rapaglia, I'm assuming this is the, these are all the current dates in there. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, there's, there's no further discussion. I welcome a, a motion. Mr. Bollinger. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, new business case A22-0169. Uh, Crimson Properties applicant, property located at 2 through 6 and a half Bridge Street and 2 through 4 Robinson Court, finding that it does meet the requirements outlined in Site Plan NRO Section 190-146D, subject to 16 conditions. Uh, condition number one with respect to a waiver. Um, excuse me, regarding existing condition plans shall read is granted, will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. 
Stipulation number two with respect to a waiver regarding parking, parking dimensions shall read is granted, will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. Stipulation number three, a waiver request with respect to landscaped island shall read is granted, will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. Stipulation number four, um, waiver request with respect to detailed survey on abutting properties. Sorry, I'm sorry Mr. Bollinger, just to stop. Oh. There was a, an amended staff report, and I believe it's that oh. it's that fourth waiver request that's not included. Correct. Is that yeah, it? yeah. My you, apologies. You, no, I don't know Try the is. amended. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's, it's everything uh, it would be the same except for that fourth waiver request. My apologies, Mr. Chair. I no, no, had no, that no. open, and I was looking off the paper copy. Um, I would like to uh, withdraw stipulation number four, if I may, Mr. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, continuing on, uh, stipulation, I guess, new number four, as, as written uh, in the staff report. Stipulation five, uh, to read dated August 29th, 2022. Stipulation six through 15, as written in the staff report. Correct. And I think if I didn't butcher that too badly that no. that that covers everything I think that I think that's right. perfect thank you mr. chair I appreciate the no, correction um, so we have um, that motion by mr. Bollinger for approval of new business a 20 a 22-0169 site plan um, with the 15 stipulations as indicated is there a second to that motion seconded by mr. Hirsch is there any further discussion all those in favor Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Six to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, the only other thing we have on our agenda is under other business, we have a review of the tentative agenda to determine proposals of regional impact. Um, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't believe that there was anything on there. No. Mr. Chair. Mr. Bollinger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to make a motion um, that uh, after reviewing the technical review meeting agenda of August 8th, 2022, there are um, no upcoming projects of, uh, of regional impact. Thank you. Uh, so that motion by Mr. Bollinger is that having reviewed um, that uh, technical uh, review agenda, that there's, there are no proposals of regional impact. Is there a second to that motion? Second by Mr. Meehan. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion passes six to zero. Okay. Um, any discussion items? Anyone wants to bring up? Mr. Meehan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was uh, looking at our technical report and seeing some of the projects that are coming toward us. And it reminded me of the uh, terrific professional development we had, I forget when that was, in February, something like when that. When we did the, uh, the, the zone, it was the standards for variance. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would just love to encourage the potential for us to continue with more of a regular pattern of professional development. Um, I, I did look into, um, and I have done the statewide web conference thing, and it's just, it's, so different for us here in the city with both with staff who provide so much for us but also the scale and the rate of development that's happening here that I find that the state provided professional development for planning boards is not always as helpful as it could be and um, I would love to see us do a little bit more with that as we go down the road because we have a lot of really interesting projects coming and more input I can get, the more I can read, even if it's just articles you guys throw at us, whatever that is, um, I would love more to be able to better, be better prepared for the, what's coming down the pike. Okay, great. Yeah, so I mean, I, I guess, I don't know if there are, I don't know if there are other opportunities, um, what's, what's this, I forget the name of the state agency that does the trade, but I don't know if they, if they maybe do some that are more geared towards, you know, like a Manchester, Nashua, you know, Portsmouth type, you know, uh, as you said, because certainly the work we do on this board is very different than, you know, in a smaller community, certainly. So I don't know if they have it, if there's additional opportunities that might exist. Um, 
Mr. 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 Chair, j just to Mr. Meehan's point, um, and, and I don't want to—I don't mean to call out any specific project, but I, I think some of the training that we received was somewhat relegated, or at least pertaining to a project that may appear before us, yes. and there may have been some time lag. And I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I, I guess if that project were to reappear, it, it might be useful to maybe have a little bit of a, a quick refresher course on, on what our, our plans were. I think there were some special stimulate stipulations with regard to planning board oversight where we potentially have almost more of a, 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 a zoning role, yeah. role, yes. No, I, so, that's that's absolutely right. I, I, and I don't even remember the, what the project was, so I wouldn't be able to speak to which one, but, but you're right, that was, um, and I think it was had to do with it being within an overlay district that had a zoning component and, and to I it. And I think there were some prescriptive uh, uh, zoning or planning regs written just specifically for that parcel right. or some of the surrounding parcels. So, so again, not that that's uh, you know good or bad, but um, th that's one where I, I personally, if that were to appear before us in actuality, that that might be a, a decent re refresher. So, yep, no, that's a good um, point. Thank you. Um, I think that would be great. Sure. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're not. I, I, I didn't mean to imply we need to tie up more uh, after-hour staff time with that, <laughs> but uh, that 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 was, I think, kind of a special situation. Something that not always comes before the planning board. So there, there, just reasonably, there, there could be some some questions that come up with respect to role and and jurisdiction. It's a little bit of a unusual case for for this board. So. Uh, and again, not trying to trample over what, what Mr. Meehan no, no, said, so. Um, that's exactly right, part of okay. it. Okay, right. right, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank Alderman Sivo? Uh, yeah, this isn't necessarily a discussion, but I'm, I'm the alternate for the Alderman and uh, liaison, but really it's Alder, Alderman Klee, so I just wanted to say I wish her the best as she had some uh, medical stuff today or else she would probably be here in my place. But I just wanted to wish her well out there and uh, uh, I want to thank her for me being a shorter planning board meeting. Yeah. I've, been in, I've been out there many a time, and yeah. those, don't, those aren't as short as uh, this one. So Maybe we need to have you sit up here more often. I know. The, yeah. <laughs> the short meetings. Well, thank you. All right. Um, well, if there's nothing else, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Mead? Motion to adjourn. Uh, motion to adjourn. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes, and we are adjourned at 749. Wow.